Hello everyone, and welcome to Lab 5 Part 1, Identifying Unknown Minerals. In this part of the lab, we're going to apply the principles we learned in Lab 4 to identify unknown minerals. Part 1 uses a mineral identification Excel sheet located in Blackboard, which looks a lot like what you see on your screen. This sheet has several columns, such as sample number, luster, hardness, cleavage, other diagnostic properties, and mineral name. The sample number field corresponds to the number that you'll, or sorry, the letter you will see labeled on each of the mineral samples in the mineral kits. In the luster column, you will describe if the mineral exhibits a metallic luster, or if not, if it's light or dark colored and the specific luster of the mineral. In the hardness field, you'll identify if the mineral has a hardness greater than glass, or softer than glass. In the cleavage field, you'll identify if the mineral exhibits cleavage, and if so, how many cleavage planes it has. If it doesn't have cleavage, you'll mark that it has fracture. For other diagnostic properties, you'll list any other characteristics you see on the mineral that help you identify it. And finally, in the mineral name field, you'll state the name of the mineral. So, You'll see on the bottom of the screen, we have three minerals, A, B, and C, which we're going to use, ex uh, use as examples to show you how to fill in this chart. So, starting with mineral A, when we examine it, we discover that it has a non-metallic luster. So we'd write NM in the luster field. We also note that it's light-colored, so we'd write L. And finally, we identify the specific luster which is vitreous or glassy. So you'd write V. We perform a scratch test on the mineral and discover that it has a hardness greater than glass. So you'd write H. We look at the mineral closely and we discover that it in fact has no cleavage planes but rather has fracture planes. So we'd write F for fracture under cleavage. Upon further examination, we discover that the mineral exhibits concordal fracture and that the mineral has a hexagonal crystal habit. So we can take all these characteristics and go to the mineral flow chart, also located on Blackboard, and identify the mineral name. This flowchart has a series of brackets that all start off with the luster of the mineral. So for mineral A, we know that it had a non-metallic luster and was light colored. So we go to the non-metallic light colored bracket, located on the left. We would then use the, uh, the next bracket asks us about the hardness of the mineral. We discovered that our mineral was harder than glass, so we'd use the hard bracket. Finally, it asks us if the mineral exhibits cleavage. We discarded mineral A, in fact, does not, so we'd use the no cleavage bracket, which leaves us three possible options, quartz, olivine, and garnet. We can quickly rule out garnet because it's described as having a crystal, uh, diamond-like or dodecahedral crystal habit. Whereas we discovered our mineral had a hexagonal crystal structure, so we can cross that out. Which leaves us a two choices, quartz and olivine. Olivine is described as having an olive green color, whereas mineral A does not, so we can rule out olivine. Additionally, when we look at the, look at the description of quartz, we note that it has concordal fracture and a hexagonal crystal structure which is the same as what we identified in our Excel sheet. So the name of mineral A is quartz. So we'll go back to the Excel sheet and we'll write quartz for the mineral name. Now when we examine mineral B, we know that it has metallic luster. So we'd write M for metallic in the luster field. When we perform a scratch test, we discover that the mineral is harder than glass, so we'd write H. 
We examine the mural closely and we discover that there are no cleavage planes, but we do find numerous fractured planes. So we'd write F for fracture. When we examine the mineral closely, we notice that it's highly magnetic and that leaves a black streak. So it's magnetic and has a black streak. So just like last time, we'll go to the mineral flow chart and use these characteristics to identify the mineral. This time, we'll want to use the metallic luster bracket located on the bottom right. This gives us two choices. Does the mineral have a black, green black, or dark green streak, or does it have a red streak? We discovered that our mineral, in fact, had a black streak, so we'll use the top bracket, which leaves us several options. If we look at the descriptions, we'll note that the bottom minerals all have um, hardnesses less than three. We discovered that our mineral was harder than glass, or harder than five and a half, so we can rule these out. Leaving us with magnetite and pyrite. When we look at, the, look at the descriptions of the minerals, we find they have similar hardnesses, neither have cleavage, but we note that only magnetite is described as being strongly magnetic, which is what we found with our mineral. So our mineral will be magnetite. So we go back to our Excel sheet and write magnetite for the mineral name. Finally, when we examine mineral C, we find that it's non-metallic, light-colored, and has a vitreous luster. When we perform a scratch test, we find it's softer than glass, so we'd write S for softer. We look at the crystal structure and we know that it has three cleavage planes. One, two, and three. But the angle between them is something other than 90 degrees. So you'd write three planes not equal to 90 degrees. And when we look at the mineral closely, we know that it has a rhombohedral crystal form. and that it effervesces, or reacts, with hydrochloric acid. So armed with this information, we go back to our handy flow chart. So we'll go back to the non-metallic, light-colored bracket. But in this instance, we found the mineral was softer than glass, so we'd use the soft bracket below that. Then, because we saw it, that it exhibits cleavage, we'd use the show's cleavage bracket. Once we get to this, we see several possible choices. So we go down the line and read the descriptions. We note only one mineral is known to have a rhombohedral crystal structure and to effervesce with hydrochloric acid. And that mineral is calcite. So that will be the name of our third unknown. So we'll go back to our Excel sheet and write calcite. As I mentioned earlier, these three minerals are not the same A, B, and C as you have in your mineral kits, so don't be surprised if you get different values for these samples. Additionally, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. I'm here to help you guys. And finally, I'm also uploading a PowerPoint showing commonly confused minerals that should be very helpful in sorting out which mineral you're looking at.